somebody next year and say, I don't know about you, but my God is stronger, is more powerful, is greater than any power on the earth. If you really believe that, give the king a praise. Thank you, Shekinah Glory. Thank you, minstrels. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. We are excited about the word that we're getting ready to release. Let's get ready to roll our review preview. But before we do that, we've been praying so heavily for him. He's been such a faithful, not only deacon, but armor bearer, not just for days, weeks, or months, but for years. So happy to see and to have Deacon Julius Weiss in your back this morning. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Love you, Jew. God bless you. Let's have our review and preview and then the word. that we eat or drink something every day. So every day, you ought to give God glory. When you wake up in the morning and you look at your roof and it's not your casket, you ought to give him the glory. When you're able to ride to your house and come back safe, when your children go to school and come back and they have not been kidnapped, you ought to give him the glory. You are not a member of Valley Kingdom Ministries International. Sacrilege. Crucify him. Nowhere in God's word that says that we are members of, of Valley Kingdom Ministry. The valley is a ministry in the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. The membership that brings you privileges is being a member of the body of Christ, not just a member of the local assembly. It's his church and he only has one god is calling us to be the body to work together all of us are important so you'll be jealous you won't give the other thing is you won't work but what is happening is serving is shutting down giving is shutting down faithfulness is shutting down all because the members of his body are not functioning like the body of Christ. You are a member of the body and because you are a member and I'm a member of the body, you have privileges. Romans chapter 12, verses four through eight. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. after me for as we have many members in one body but all the members do not have the same function so we being many are one body one body in Christ and individually members of one another Grab somebody by the hand and look them in the eye and just put some 
accentuation on them. Just say, God, God has a bad body. Now, come on, give God the praise right there. Father, thank you for this word. You're getting ready to release to your people. Let it strengthen us. Let it build us up. Let us make us bitter, better and never bitter. Your house, your word, your time. Do what you do and be a blessing. You get the glory, all the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Come on, celebrate the king. Amen. I heard somebody's phone go off. We, we want your phone on. We haven't said this in a while. But again, we want you to have your phone on, FaceTime, Snapchat, however. And if you are hearing something that is a, uh, a blessing to you here in the temple, then send it out and be a blessing to someone else. God, I know when you rolled up in the parking lot and saw that on the marquee, you said, what in the world? is apostle about to deal with today was well, stay tuned as always we uh we meet you and we greet you in the wonderful name of our lord and savior and king and as always it is our sincere prayer <laughs> that's my ipad behave all right uh, we pray that these messages are blessing uh, to you so God can work through you to bring glory to his name and to advance the kingdom for the king. If you believe that, put a praise right there. For the past 12 weeks since we returned from our sabbatical and all this year, we've been teaching on the P's, on possession and position and privilege and power and praise and persistence, persistence and perseverance, all for one cause, and that is to get us in position for possession. I believe it's going to increase in 2019, but I believe I got a witness in the house, it's starting already. Oh, you ought to call those things that be not. Once again, each and every week, we give the base or the bases, and you may say, well, Apostle, why do you give these scriptures every week? Because they are those who are tuning in by way of live streaming and Facebook who have not heard uh, these teachings or these messages even before. So Genesis 15, 13. Come on, y'all read that. Come on, read. Which is not theirs, and will serve them, and will afflict them 400 years, and also that nation whom they serve, I will judge. And afterward, they shall come out with great possession. Now we know that God is a God of his word. That not only does he promise it, but he also performs it. And he did exactly what he said and promised to a man named Abraham. Now again, we need you to understand. Okay, if those promises were made to Abraham and God brought it to pass then, what does that have to do with us? I'm glad you asked. Galatians 3 and 26 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. There is now neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, but we are all one in Christ. And if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I need you to see, do something. Sometimes when you say something, it ignites, it activates something in your spirit. Repeat after me. I am, I am a, son a son and a daughter, and a daughter of, Abraham. of Abraham. Hereby, Hereby I, am I am an heir according, according to, the to the promises that God made him. God made Come on, give God a praise right there. Now, now, now. For those who feel that they may re miss it, relax, chill, because God has something called coattail blessings. Coattail, Exodus 12, 36, 38. You ain't going to miss out. And the Lord give, had given the people favor in the sight. It was the night before they left Egypt, the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested, and they plundered the Egyptians. Then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sirkoth, 
about 630,000 men on foot besides women and children. But here it is. And a mixed multitude went up with them also with their flocks herd and a great deal of livestock. So what am I saying? That those who are connected to us will get the coattail blessings that God is getting ready to give us. Amen. Come on, give God the praise. So again, in August, we talked about preparing for the possession. September, it's our inheritance. October, we've been dealing, spilling over into November, the purpose for our possession. I cannot stress that enough, that what God is doing for us and giving us, he has a purpose for our possessions. But today, what we want to do is try to connect and as best we can complete what we started last week. And that is to make sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're fully convinced that you understand that we are the body of Christ. Remember we said it real slow last week? Come on, repeat after me. Say, I am a member of the body of Christ. The church we tried to share, the ecclesia, is not a building, but it's a body. I said it last week, God forbid that this beautiful uh, 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 campus that God has given us, the temple on this side, the hall of faith and the administration building, that God has given us, y'all, 15 acres of, of property and this huge uh, uh, facility to be able to do ministry. If it burnt to the ground, guess what? The valley lives on because you are the valley and we are a member of the body of Christ. Put a praise right there. So the ecclesia is a building and not, and not it's, it's not a building, but it's the body. Number two, we are members of this body and we must all work together spiritually just like our human body. And I'm not going to even go through all the things, examples I gave on last week. But then number three, that membership in the body has privileges. I hope that y'all have been putting this blessed card on some stuff on last week. And if you then, you are missing a blessing. God had something for you last week that you need to put your hand on it and claim it in the mighty name of Jesus. Turn to somebody and say, I'm going to do better this week. All right, but what we cannot afford to miss is that because uh, we are who we are and what we are, when the world looks you know what they ought to say? They ought to say, God's got a bad body. Come on, somebody, give God praise right there. Somebody pray for this technology because it is messing up and I'm about to beat my iPad real bad here. Listen. <sighs> Without being current, we have dismissed the children and the youth. So can we have some grown folk talk? All right, without being carnal, but keeping it real, when we look at the opposite sex, strictly from a physical appearance, we may not say it, but we have thought it or either texted that, wow, he or she got a bad body. I wish I had some honest folk in the house. Now, that does not include lust. Oftentimes, it's admiration and not a sexual manifestation. See, when we say that the devil has made us, has made messed us up so bad that, that, that some of you, even when you heard that, oh, what apostle going to do? Is he talking about sex? Y'all, God made us have a bad body. You know I'm going to back it up with word. Uh -uh. Psalms 139, 14. Look at what it says here. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'll touch somebody and say, you wonderfully made, you wonderfully made. You are marvelous in your works, and my soul does know you well. Ha! Huh. God has made 
the human body, not only in this operation, but in this appearance, he's made it beautiful. Uh, since I can't get a witness here, let me call a couple of witnesses. The Rock! All right, sisters, calm down, calm, calm, calm down. Now, when we see his movies and, and he takes off his, it, it takes off his shirt, we, we're not just looking that, that, you know, he's just a splendid actor. The boy got a bad body. Come on, somebody. Even the brothers can say that. Come on. When, oh, brothers, put your seat better. When we look at Sister Girl, Beyonce. The girl got a bad body. When we look at our former first lady, Michelle Obama, she made sleeveless shirts popular because she was buff. She was lifting weights. Her guns, her arms were strong. Oh, oh, go on, hold your seatbelt again, sisters. When we look at the movie star Idris Elba, you just not listening to his English accent. I wish I had a witness in the house. Y'all, if, if y'all really be honest today, I can really help us. Now understand this, this is a key point. Biologically, people have bad bodies for different reasons. Number one, some people have a bad body because of something called DNA. You are buffed and you look good because your mama and your daddy, you got that DNA from them. Can we really talk? You brag about how you look in your jeans. It's not just because you look like that in your jeans. It's because of your mama and daddy's jeans. Come on, help me, somebody. Some, so a lot of our bodies are built because of DNA. But then a lot of people, bodies are one way or the one, another way because of what they E-A-T. What they eat. You know, the, 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 the word of God says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Now, this ain't in the word of God, so don't even say that. Apostle, but that ain't in the word of God. But I want to add something. As a man or woman eateth, so are they. Now, I know I done took a lot of ridicule on some of the stuff that I've said, but how in the world, if you're constantly eating P-I-G and don't expect to be B-I-G? Can we talk? How can you constantly eat from an animal who is fat and don't think you ain't going to gain no weight? I never will forget. I never will forget, y'all. This is a funny story, but it's true. I was in McDonald's a couple of years ago. Big brother came in, 3, 340, 345, big brother. I was behind him. He said, give me uh, two Big Macs, a uh, double cheeseburger, a large order of fries, two apple pies, and a Diet Coke. I said, what that brother think? That that Coke was going to magically get rid of all that other stuff? It don't happen. So, your body is based on what your DNA, what you E-A-T, but also how you L-I-V-E, how you live. And all, I'm all by myself who you have went to a family reunion or a class reunion, and you saw some people you went to high school with, and you had to sh look at them, and, you know, instead of your girlfriend, they look like your grandma. Come on, help me, somebody. It's because of some lifestyle. 
you can almost look at some people and just to tell how they are living. And so your body is, is indicative of DNA, what you E-A-T, but also how you L-I-V-E. That's why the word of God says that the spiritual is not first but the natural. Let me show you something here. Put that up. However, the spiritual is not first but the natural and afterward the spiritual. So just as it is with the human body, so it is with the body of Christ. That it is predicated on those same three things, but from a spiritual level. The body of Christ ought to be beautiful because of DNA. We ought to have the DNA of our daddy. Oh, y'all know I'm going somewhere. Listen, the DNA of our father, when he created things in the book of Genesis, he didn't put his hands on nothing but man. Everything else he just spoke. He said, let there be sun, let there be the moon, let there be flying things and swimming things and crawling things. And the Bible says that what he spoke, it happened. Well, I'm here to tell you whether you know it or not, if you read his book, we have the same DNA. The Bible said that we can call some things that be not as though they were. We can decree a thing and that thing shall be established. Tell somebody the body of Christ ought to have a bad body because of DNA. But the second thing, we ought to have a bad body in the spirit realm because of what we E-A-T. I am concerned that so many a body in the body of Christ, we are eating from too many tables. We went into one conference one week and you're reading something else another week. You need to sit down somewhere, get under the word, make sure that word is solid and it lines up with the word of God. You just can't eat at every single table and have a healthy body. Somebody ought to give God the praise. But then it's also how we eat L-I-V-E. What is your lifestyle? What is your prayer life? What is your praise life? How much time do you spend reading the word of God? If we want the world to look at us and say God has a bad body, we got to watch our DNA, what we eat, and how we live. Somebody ought to put a praise right there. Hmm. And the more we work at it, the better it looks. The less we work at it, the worse it looks. And some need to work harder than others. Remember uh, Martin and Big Mama? We, we, there's some areas that we need to work on. Can, can we talk? Can, can we really talk? I, I don't know if I'm by myself. Have you, um, you ever been around people who can eat anything they want. And they stay thin as a rail. They can eat five old-fashioned donuts and still slim and trim. You can drive by Michigan. Don't even get out your car. Look over there and gain three pounds. Come on, somebody. What we must realize is that just as it is in the natural body that we have to work on some things. If we can really talk as grown folks, listen, some ladies got to work on them hips. Some men have to do more work to keep their stomach slim. So it is with the body of Christ. Sometimes you got to work harder on forgiveness and pride and arrogance and anger and lust and lying. I need to send this message to 45 because that brother need to really work on that lying demon. Come on, somebody help me. But as members of the, of the body of Christ, we must always strive to make sure his body looks good. Why? Because whether you know it or not, every day the world is checking us out. 
They're looking at us on your job. They're looking at us wherever we travel. They're listening to our language. They're watching, watching our attitudes and our anger. Listen, we are members individually, but we're also members collectively. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14, it says, For as the body is many members, but all members of that one body, being many, also are one body, so in Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. We've been all to made to drink into one body. In fact, the body is not one member, but many. God, we love you today. Yeah, God has continued just to give me revelation on how the human body works and how the body of Christ ought to work. He, God gave me such a simple example. He said, son, show how the, how, how the body works just going to a restaurant. And I went through the process. First of all, your brain or your mind has to think of, first of all, where you want to go. Then after you decide you want to go, then you're going to have to say, legs, take me to my car. You get in your car, your hands have to turn on the ignition. Your hands have to drive. Your feet have to be on the pedal. Your eyes have to guide you where you're going. You get to the restaurant, you get there, your eyes open up the menu, your hands eat the meal, your body helps di digest it. But just in something as simple as going to a restaurant, all the body functions perfectly together. What would Chicago, what would this world be like if all the body function as a cohesive unit. Somebody give God the praise. So, if we are going to make sure that God's body looks good, Holy Spirit gave me four things to remind us who the body is. Number one, repeat after me, his body, his body. is an embassy. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled unto God. Yeah, we put far too many limits on the Lord. We, we, ju we just think about... Uh, Sunday service and think that's all we can do. That, that I sing on the praise team or in the choir or I escort people in as a doorkeeper. Or I'm a deacon that go to the hospital and pray for people. That I'm a minister or elders who's teaching God's people. Y'all, that is tonight's thinking. You need to expand your mind and understand that you, as the body of Christ, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Somebody give God a praise. So what is an ambassador? Y'all remember, I guess it's about four or five years ago, you know, you know I'd be doing crazy stuff. Y'all, I came in here and half my pa face was painted one way and the other half, and you know, I had on one of my shirts, I had one was sleeve was this color. I was showing that we are, we, we, we are members to kingdom. Hmm. What is an ambassador? An ambassador is a representative of a government in a foreign country who represents the interests of the country they are from. Mm. What the body can never forget that we are citizens of two places. Y'all, I have traveled around the world and I'll stand here flat foot every single day that I have this mic and I will say that no matter how many cities or countries I have visited, I would not want to live in no place but the United States of America. With all of its faults and failures and flaws, this nation is the greatest nation on the face of the earth. And yet, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. I'm from another, we're from another government. And so when we got born again, we became ambassadors in the world for another kingdom and another government, and that is the government of God. Somebody give God a praise right there. And so the ecclesia is God's embassy on earth 
whether you're, you are an ambassador, whether we're an ambassador, whether we're in jewels or on our job, at the bank, at the barber shop, at the beauty shop, at McDonald's, at the mall, at the movies, at your house and his house, you always take the kingdom with you as an ambassador. Can I back that up with word? You know I can. Luke 17, 24. Don't say see here, see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So wherever you go, you are an ambassador. And the world is looking at us. And when they see us, they ought to say, God has a bad body. Somebody give God a praise right there. And as I said it last week, because you are an ambassador, membership has privileges. You know I love acronyms. Y'all, one of the benefits of privileges of being an ambassador is we have SDI. Apostle, what in the world is that? You, we have spiritual diplomatic immunity. That's just not fancy word. That's true. Let me let you understand. Because we are an ambassador for Christ, because we are members of the body of Christ, we ought to wake up every single morning and tell the devil, as Hammer used to say, do, 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 can't touch this. Y'all messing that up. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. The devil really does not have the authority to meddle in your life because we have spiritual, diplomatic immunity. Y'all remember, you know I'm a movie man. I'm going to throw some movies or sports in. Remember, and I, I tried to find a clip this week. One of my favorite actors is Denzel. Bad man, bad man. One of my favorite movies was a movie called Safe House. Remember Safe House, that he was a spy, and they were after him at the end of the movie? He running through supermarkets, running through buildings, but he had a destination that he was going through. He was trying to make it to the United States Embassy because he knew once he got into the embassy, nobody who was after him could do him no harm. I'm here to tell you that we as the body of Christ, we have spiritual the devil really can't do us no harm. He cannot get into the embassy. He can't get in. We got to let him in. Somebody ought to give God the praise right now. He can't arrest you. He can't harass you. Do you know that an ambassador in a foreign nation can't even get a speeding ticket? They have on their license plates diplomat. So if the popo pull them over and walk up there, they ain't even got to show their license. All they, uh, 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 drivers, not, all they have to do is just point to the plate and just say, you can't touch me because I have diplomatic immunity. You ought to tell the devil when he's going after your finances, when he's going after your family, when he's going after your health, you can't touch me because I have diplomatic immunity. Somebody give God an ambassadorial praise. How do you get in? By our words. I'm sick. I'm broke. I'm so poor I can't even pay attention. You open the door to the embassy. Instead of speaking the words of the word of God and our God and saying, I may be going through something like now, but I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. Somebody give him some ambassadorial praise. Well, I'm going some with this one. Because we are an embassy. The unsaved should, should know when they come to us, they come into a safe place. That what they tell us ain't going to be on Facebook in the afternoon. That the counsel 
that they seeking for us that we're going to give it and it's going to be sound and it's going to be biblical that even when they're struggling that we got a word of hope for them that we're not down and depressed just like them that we have the word of God we may be in the same place they in but we're not in the same place they in somebody give God a praise right there tell somebody his body, his body. Is, is an embassy Oh boy, we keep going. But number two, his body is a bad body because his body is not only an embassy, but his body is also a factory. John 15 and 8. John 15 and 8. Come on, read that. But this, put that back up. Give me small screen. That's good. But this, my father, by this, my father is glorified that you bear little fruit, a grape every once in a while, much fruit. When, when the world looks at us, they ought to see God has a bad body. The Bible speaks of both. When we get saved and come into the body of Christ as a babe in Christ, it ought to be this. I picked up the wrong thing. But after some maturity, you ought to go from milk to me. Oh, God, it got mighty quiet in here. Milk builds strong bones, but meat builds a strong body. I'm trying to teach this. The word of God tells us about how strong the body of Christ is supposed to be, that we're supposed to bear fruit and bring about the meat of the word. <sighs> Billy Jean, thank you, Prophet Billy. I had to bring this in. What a great cornucopia. That's a real word, y'all. I see here grapes, strawberries, melons, watermelon, cantaloupe, strawberries, black blueberries, much, no, Doc, ain't no pineapple in here. Yeah, it is, it's pineapple. The point is, the point is, whether you know it or not, the world is looking through our fruit. And it's crazy for the strawberry to have a problem because it's not a pineapple. I just read the opening scripture says that we have diverse gifts and diverse ministry. Y'all, we got to put stuff out. And like I said, like when well, you got to be solid with who God made you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Whatever gift and talent, God has put them in you for the body to work together. All of these fruits are different but they all make up the fruit tray. We got all these different types of, 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 of fruit here in the members of the body of Christ, and each and every one of us has a different talent. Somebody give God the praise. I'm going to go back to this. As a babe of Christ, all you know is you're supposed to give something in church, be it a dollar, be it two dollars, but when you get to me, you ought to know that God has called you to be a tither. How can you be in the body of Christ 15, 20 years and you're still struggling with tithing? you still on me. you still saying goo, goo, ga, ga. When the world sees it, they ought to see that we are strong. When your, when your baby is born, if you breastfeed, you breastfeed milk. But when that baby is 15, 16 years old, 
that baby ought to be a son able to eat meat and to feed himself. Somebody ought to give God the praise right there. <sighs> Y'all, we're a factory. The body of Christ is, is a global corporation that is in every nation of the face of the world. <laughs> you know, the Lord gives me some interesting analogies. We got too many Harold's churches, chicken, Christians. What am, I, what am I saying on there? Harold's is only in Chicago. McDonald's is in the world. Y'all, y'all missed that. I hear people all the time, I can't wait to go back home. I'm going to go back home there and get me some Harold's fried hog. But y'all, we supposed to be more as the body of Christ to just think about Chicago and Inglewood and the Ickies and, and Flossmoor and the West Side. We ought to have a global mentality to know that we are members of the body of Christ and we are a worldwide corporation. Oh, I need to remind you, we are 2,000 years old. He said, on this rock, I'll build my church 2,000 years ago. Our CEO is the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Our product is salvation. Our headquarters is 777 Heaven Boulevard. Our employees is a number no man can number. Our pay is daily as well as internal, and our benefits are out of this world. The hardest thing sometime to deal with is this time is the church not only has ministries, but we are a factory. First Peter 2 and 9. First Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, a special people to proclaim the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. You know why that worship song and Thad Thank You and Shekinah Glory, that's the first time I'd heard. That's such a powerful worship uh, song. And it connected in our spirit because something in us said to ourselves, I will not be silent. I will worship him as long as there is breath in my body. Any worshipers in the house right now? I just don't worship in him in Oak Forest. I can worship him, him in the tub. I can worship him driving my car. I can worship him in the mall at the movies. I can worship him anywhere. Tell somebody, don't get in my way. I'll break into a worship right here. Somebody give God a praise right there. We are a factory. We're supposed to take our praise, our worship, and our works everywhere we go. So the world can look and just say, God's got a bad body. I told you I was going somewhere with this. Y'all, we are the greatest exporter of product in the world. Unbeknownst, it's not Amazon. It's the almighty Jesus Christ. Come on, give God a praise right now. I got to hurry on. So number one, his body is an embassy. Number two, his body is a factory. Oh, I love this name, this next one. His body is also an army. We just, we, we, we just honored our veterans of the Army and Air Force and Navy and Marines. Ephesians 6 and 12, look at what it says. Come on, read that. Ephesians 6 and 12, read what it says here. In heavenly places. I need you to do something. I want, I want SGM to just to help me out. I need to tell you, as I look around the, the, this world, come on, as I look around this world, I just got one thing to say. With all the trouble, with all the problems, I tell Satan right now, this means war. Tell somebody, say, this means war. Tell somebody, say, this means war. Come on, put those hands together. Get joy in my soul. God is in control. Get Satan on my trail. 
but I'm saying all is well. He's fighting every day, but I'm watching while I pray. And no matter the attack, I won't turn back. Come on, say that. Because this means war. why sometimes the world looks at us and they don't take us seriously because they see us playing church. Y'all done heard that before. In about an hour, 32 teams, Doc Daniels, will be on the football fields of our country. Teams win a game, but it takes armies to win wars. Somebody ought to give God the praise right now. The reason why these men and women line up here and we still live in a free country was they either went to war or were they trained to fight war. I need you to tell three people around you, quit playing, quit playing, quit playing. This is serious. There's a war on the street, war against drugs, war in the family, war with jobs, war with homes, war with marriages, war in our bodies, war in our man. And oftentimes, we don't have enough victories against the enemy. Why would he give us weapons? Put up 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Why would he put, give us weapons if he didn't expect, expect for us to fight? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. We're trying to fight the enemy with his weapons. Y'all, you can't cuss demons out. Can't cuss them out. You got to cast them out. God has given us power. So when the world sees us, they ought to sit up with respect and just say, I can't do anything around them because that is a warrior for the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to give God the praise even right now. Oh, I wish I didn't have to go here. I don't have to real quick. My last point. And I know these soldiers who line up will tell you the worst thing about any war is when a soldier kills another soldier with friendly fire. Ain't no honor in that. But y'all, that's why I don't go off go on it that often but when I do I see the saints killing each other with the bullets of Facebook sending out discouragement talking about the body of Christ 
the body of Christ, y'all, ain't a perfect place. It's a hospital where people are trying to get well. Stop looking for people in here to be perfect because you need to look in the mirror and find out we ain't perfect. Stop killing each other with friendly fire. Unsaved people look at Facebook, and I've seen it many times. That's why I'm not a Christian, if that's what they do to each other. I'm going to ask you to do something crazy. Put your hand out. Now slap yourself. I saw some of you. You know why that's bizarre? Because the body don't do stuff to hurt itself. So why in the world is we are the body of Christ that we shooting at other people? Y'all, let's stop shooting at other pastors. Y'all will never hear me stand in these 35 years. I've never stood here and criticized another man of God. Don't criticize other ministry. Don't criticize other believers. Let's stop killing each other with friendly fire. Let's be an army that works together so that when the world sees us, they'll be able to look at the army and say, God's got a bad body. Give God a praise right there. Let me end on this. SGM, y'all get ready. Come on up. So... The body of Christ is an embassy, it's a factory, it's an army. But finally, more probably important than anything else, his body is a family. Galatians 6 and 10. Therefore, whenever you have the opportunity, let's do good to all, to everybody, but especially to those who are in the family, who are in the household of faith. If there's one thing that will make his body look good is for the world to look at us and say, they resemble their dad. I've heard it a hundred times in my lifetime when people see pictures of my father. That's a good looking old boy, ain't it? And then they see pictures of me. They say, you look just like your father. And you know what I answer them? Who I supposed to look like? The mailman? You're supposed to look like your father. So when the world looks at us, they ought to say, you look like daddy. You look like your so good daddy, not that other stuff. Y'all, I know they put it on Facebook and it's a little moniker and, and a little nickname with them. Rob and Sars, they call themselves Dim Leaves. But let me tell you about Dim Roof Sars. I had seven other siblings. We had arguments then, we still have arguments now. But if one thing my daddy drilled in us, I want y'all to get along while y'all in here. But y'all better get along when y'all out there because if they see you fussing and fighting y'all hurt my name when the world sees us fussing and fighting it ain't about us we hurt his name so whenever I went out no matter how I fought with Raymond or Rose or Mary or Margaret or Melvin or Marvin, when I got outside and when they got outside, we had each other's back. 
Now let's have each other's back. Let's look out for one another. One of the things, and it was that season when the valley was just really just going. Remember we had the bumper stickers. And that was so rich because everywhere you would go, you would see a valley bumper sticker. So if somebody was on the side of the road, we didn't honk at them and say, boy, they got a flat tire. I hope they get it fixed. They would pull over because they knew that was family. Even without a bumper sticker, we family. Even without us being in here, we family. We got to realize and look out after each other so when the world looks at us, they will say, God got a bad body. We got to make up what kind of family we're going to be. Are we going to be a fussing, fighting family? Are we going to be the Adams family? Eat the end is spooky. We're God's family. That's why we call each other brother and sister. That's why y'all call me dad. Because we're a family all pointed to our heavenly father. Y'all, if we remember that we're an embassy, that we're a factory, that we're an army, and that we're a family, when the world looks at us, they're going to see something and they're going to say something. What are they going to say? God's got a what? Give God the praise right now. Give him the praise right now. But in order to do that, in order to be a member of the factory, the embassy, the family, and the army, you got to surrender. You got to surrender. You got to surrender all. And guess what? Withholding nothing. I've heard it said before, and you know, I'm. <laughs> remember that? And some of you can relate to that. Remember that it was a strange oxymoron. Remember that room in your parents' home or either your grandparents' home? They called it the living room, but nobody could go in there. had the nice couch with that real thick plastic on it. You sit down in and you get the fan and you'd be so hot. You weren't allowed in there. Why would they call it the living room and nobody could be in there? Many of us, we treat God like that. You can go in the kitchen. You can go in the bedroom. You can go in the guest room. But there are some rooms in my house that you can't go. But if we're going to be that embassy, factory, army, and family, you got to be able to let God into every single place in your life withholding nothing. Come on, minister to us, SGM. Stand on your feet. Let me pray with you. Join somebody by the hand. Join somebody. Connect with somebody. Connect. Yes. Yes. Everything I give Let's bring our lights up. Everybody, everybody in the house, to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing, to you holding nothing 
Father, right now we thank you for this awesome worship. We thank you for the word that went forth. But Father, you said even in your word that when the word goes forth, it can fall on different grounds. We pray that this word goes deep. That when we leave out of here, that we will understand that we are being watched by the world. They're listening to our conversations. They're watching our actions. They're seeing what we do, and they're judging you by your children. From this day forward, let us remember that we are an embassy, that we're a factory, that we're an army. But more than anything, we're your family. Let the world, when they look at our lives and look at us, as Valley Kingdom Ministry or look at us as believers and members of your body that their decree will be wow God has a bad body creating us clean heart let us be who you call us to be let there be love that really flows genuine love Take us from what your word says, from glory to glory. Breathe on us anew, afresh and the more. And we'll give your name glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Ministers, elders, deacons, take your places. Y'all give us a little more of that. If you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Bible says now is the accepted time. If you already are saved but you don't have a place, a covering, a place where you call home, a place where you're in the word and under the word, and you know you're being fed by the word and with the word, you can step out and come even right now. Now is the accepted time. Elder Gerald Smith is going to come and take us to the rest of the harvest and pray for me. Let's receive him.